Yes, friends. Welcome once again to the class and welcome once again to the channel. And we are going to move on towards the next topic of discussion of today. That is kinetic energy of products. Okay. So kinetic energy of products. Regarding this, we are going to learn now. And uh, kinetic energy of products means uh, we have parent nucleus and uh, parent nucleus is disintegrated into daughter nucleus and alpha particle. We are learning about alpha particle, right? So there is parent nucleus whose symbol is X, atomic number is Z, mass number is A. It is disintegrated into daughter nucleus whose symbol is D. Atomic number is Z minus 2, atomic mass number is A minus 4, and a helium nucleus, and a helium nucleus whose atomic number is 2 and mass number is 4. So, helium nucleus means alpha particle. This is basically your alpha particle regarding which we have already learned in the previous lectures. This is, by the way, lecture number 44. If you are not aware of this particular fact, then let me tell you that this is your lecture number 44, by the way. Okay. So, let us understand kinetic energy of products. Let us understand kinetic energy of products. Okay, so the disintegration energy Q appears in the form of kinetic energy of the daughter nucleus and the alpha particle. So we have daughter nucleus and the alpha particle you can see over here, right? We have daughter nucleus and alpha particle and this is your parent nucleus. So disintegration energy, energy will be released in this particular process. In this particular process energy will be released, right? So the disintegration energy Q, okay, capital Q is the disintegration energy and it appears in the form of kinetic energy of the daughter nucleus and the alpha particle, okay? So disintegration energy Q appears in the form of kinetic energy of the daughter nucleus and the alpha particle. So KD, what does it mean by KD? KD means kinetic energy of daughter nucleus. K alpha, what does it mean? K alpha means kinetic energy of alpha particle. Okay. K alpha means kinetic energy of alpha particle and KD means kinetic energy of daughter nucleus. Okay. And the disintegration energy Q appears in the form of kinetic energy of the daughter nucleus and the alpha particle. So your disintegration energy which is capital Q it appears in the form of kinetic energy KD which is of the daughter nucleus and K alpha which is kinetic energy of alpha particle. So Q appears in the form of these two energies. So you can clearly see this thing over here that suppose a Q energy is released in this particular process. Okay. So kinetic energy will be distributed if Q energy, if Q energy is released in this process, Q energy is released in this process then what happens? Kinetic energy will be distributed amongst these two. Kinetic energy will be distributed amongst these two okay so kinetic energy is distributed i don't know why it is running very slowly today this particular software why it is running very slowly i don't understand but whatever may be the reason let us see by energy conservation what happens by energy conservation capital q equal to kd plus k alpha this is by energy conservation q appears in the form of kd and k alpha so by energy conservation as q energy is released q energy is released in the process so the Q will be distributed in the form of kinetic energy of daughter nucleus and kinetic energy of alpha particle. Now, by conservation of linear momentum, what happens? Now, suppose this is your parent nucleus and this parent nucleus disintegrates. So, what happens then? After this parent nucleus disintegrates, after this parent nucleus disintegrates, we get two daughter nuclei, uh, sorry, one daughter nuclei and one alpha particle, okay? So, the daughter nuclei will recoil, the daughter nuclei will recoil in this particular direction. The daughter nuclei will recoil in this particular direction and the alpha particle will go in this direction. So, there will be conservation of linear momentum. The initial momentum was zero and as soon as alpha particle was emitted, so the daughter nucleus, it was recoiled. The daughter nucleus was recoiled and alpha particle went in the forward direction. Okay. So, what, whichever thing is heavy, whichever thing is heavy, that actually recoils. So, daughter nucleus is your heavier as compared to alpha particle daughter nucleus is heavier as compared to alpha particle that's why daughter nucleus recoils that's why daughter nucleus recoils okay so by conservation of linear momentum what happens px okay so this is your parent nucleus this is x is what your parent nucleus now px let px be the momentum initial momentum of this parent nucleus so what happens this is your daughter nucleus its p momentum is pd vector and this is your alpha particle its momentum is p alpha vector so Px will be equal to Pd vector plus P alpha vector. You can see over here Pd, Px vector equal to Pd vector plus P alpha vector. You can clearly uh, learn from the classical phenomena, classical mechanics uh, concept. Okay. So in classical mechanics, we have conservation of linear momentum. So according to that, this condition will occur over there. And if the initial momentum as the daughter nu uh, parent nucleus, this is what? This is for the parent nucleus, momentum of parent nucleus. Okay. So as parent nucleus was at rest, so that's why initial momentum is zero as parent nucleus was at rest so that's why initial momentum is zero and uh, pd vector plus p alpha vector will remain as it is now uh, the momentum vector for a daughter nucleus momentum vector for a daughter nucleus is equal to minus of 
momentum vector for alpha particle as vectors as vectors are what vectors are direction sensitive vectors are director direction sensitive right vectors are direction sensitive so that's why we are putting a minus sign over here we are putting a minus sign over here why we are putting a minus sign over there in order to show that the daughter nucleus and the alpha particle this was your parent nucleus and this is your daughter nucleus and this is your alpha particle so this recoils this moves in the forward direction so as both of them are moving in opposite direction so that's why we are putting a negative sign over here we are putting negative sign over here in order to show in order to show that the daughter nucleus and the alpha particle are moving in opposite direction that's why we are putting a negative sign over here okay so we we have put that sign successfully now as soon as you took the modulus on both the sides as soon as you took the magnitude magnitude on both the sides what happens as soon as you took the magnitude or take the magnitude on both the side it will be pd equal to p alpha okay this is the magnitude so as soon as you take the magnitude on both the sides as only negative sign is applied over here so magnitude must be equal so pd equal to p alpha and let it be equal to p okay pd equal to p alpha that is magnitude of momentum of daughter nucleus equal to magnitude of momentum of alpha particle let me tell you that what does it mean it is the its meaning is magnitude of momentum magnitude of momentum of daughter nucleus magnitude of momentum of daughter nucleus is equal to magnitude of momentum of alpha particle okay so magnitude of momentum of daughter nucleus magnitude of momentum of daughter nucleus is equal to magnitude of momentum of alpha particle so you can clearly see this thing over here okay so pd equal to p alpha and let it be equal to a uh, sorry p pd equal to p alpha let it be equal to p let us say it is equal to p and let's uh, let's suppose this is what let's suppose this is your equation 6 let's suppose this is equation 6 now q equal to kd plus k alpha you have already learned it over here q equal to kd plus k alpha it is already seen over here and it uh, this is from where what equation number 5 this particular fact from where are we taking this particular fact this particular fact has been taken from equation 5 from equation 5 okay which we have noted down previously now you already know that kinetic energy equal to p square by 2m okay according to classical concept kinetic energy equal to p square divided by 2m this is according to classical concept okay so we are taking kinetic energy kd equal to pd square by 2md okay so kinetic energy of daughter nucleus is equal to momentum square of daughter nucleus divided by two times of mass of daughter nucleus kinetic energy of alpha particle is equal to momentum of alpha particle square divided by two times of mass of alpha particle now you already know that the magnitudes of pd and p alpha are same magnitude magnitude of pd and p alpha are same only the directions are different only the directions are opposite only the directions are opposite the directions of pd and p alpha those are opposite but the magnitude are same so as the magnitude are same and we have assumed them to be p as the magnitudes are same and we have assumed them to be p so pd equal to p alpha equal to p so in the place of pd put p in the place place of p alpha in the place of p alpha put p so p square divided by 2md plus p square divided by 2mm m alpha so what is it it is equal to p square divided by 2md plus p square divided by 2m alpha okay so p square divided by 2md plus p square divided by 2m alpha so this is the meaning now q q equal to now just to take p square by 2 common from here okay take p square by 2 common from both these terms have a look at both these terms take p square by 2 common from both these terms now as soon as you take as soon as you take p square by 2 common from both these terms you get 1 by md plus 1 by m alpha you get this particular thing now you will actually you can actually write it like that okay you can write it like this It, there should be no doubt about this particular step there should be no doubt about it we have basically taken the lcm of this and this and we have equated the denominator of these to two fractions and we have added them that's how it is being added there is no need to tell the meaning so q equal to p square by 2 multiplied by md plus m alpha divided by m alpha md okay so p square equal to now put this 2 to the right hand side so 2q will be there and m alpha md will also go to the right hand side okay so we are isolating p square from here we are separating p square from here so it will look something like this this particular term will come in the denominator okay so 2q 
m alpha m d divided by m d plus m alpha this is what this is your equation number 7 by the way okay let me tell you that this is your equation number 7 by the way okay now k alpha equal to what k alpha equal to p square divided by 2 m alpha okay k alpha equal to p square divided by 2 m alpha that is equal to now in the place of p square you can put this particular term so in the place of p square we have put this term then divided by 2 m alpha so 2 2 and 2 will cancel so let me tell you that what happens over here is that 2 q m alpha m d okay 2 q m alpha m d divided by m d plus m alpha okay this is the term and you are basically this is what this is p square and you are you are dividing by 2 m alpha so you are dividing by 2 m alpha you are dividing by that you are dividing by that so 2 and 2 will cancel out m alpha m alpha and m alpha will cancel out from here so what do you get you get m d q m d q divided by m d plus m alpha okay you get something like this m d q divided by m d plus m alpha now this is suppose your equation 8 this is what your equation 8 now <coughs> now k d k d equal to p square divided by 2 m d k d is equal to p square divided by 2 m d from the same formula p k kinetic energy is equal to p square by 2 m from that same formula we are getting this in the place of p square substitute this and uh, divided by 2 m d so 2 will cancel from here d will cancel from m d will cancel from here okay so you will get m alpha q divided by m d plus m alpha let this be 8 and let this be 9 equation 9 so what do we get then now let us suppose now mass of proton and uh, your uh, uh, neutron is approximately the same okay there is a slight difference let me tell you that mass of a neutron is a slightly more than mass of proton you must be knowing this mass of neutron is slightly greater slightly greater I am saying than mass of proton you have already learned this in the lower classes and also in the previous lectures of this series so mass of neutron is slightly greater than the mass of proton but for the sake of convenience for the sake of convenience we are taking them to be approximately equal approximately equal okay so we are taking them approximately equal we are taking them we are taking them approximately equal why are we taking them approximately equal so that our calculations are so that calculations are simplified so that calculations are simplified okay so so mass of proton is approximately equal to mass of neutron and let's suppose that is equal to m mass of proton is slightly uh, means approximately equal the, to the mass of neutron so let us suppose them to be equal to m let the mass of proton be also equal to m and let the mass of neutron be also equal to m okay so mass of proton is also m and neutron is also m only let's say let's suppose i am saying so what happens then what happens then you can clearly see this thing that this is your mass of daughter nucleus this is what mass of daughter nucleus and daughter nucleus as uh, is clearly visible over here you can clearly see this thing that daughter nucleus the mass of daughter nucleus is md the mass of daughter nucleus is md and the mass number is a minus 4 okay mass number of daughter nucleus is a minus 4 now each of the nucleon each of the nucleon has the mass m so mass of daughter nucleus will be m into a minus 4 why the mass of daughter nucleus will be m into a minus 4 why will the mass of daughter nucleus be m into a minus 4 why it be why why will it be like that why will it be like that why will the mass of daughter nucleus be m into a minus 4 why will it be like that it will be like that it will be m into a minus 4 mass of daughter nucleus will be m into a minus 4 because because mass of each nucleon mass of mass of each nucleon has been assumed to be m mass of each nucleon that is proton or neutron both proton and neutron both both of them have the mass m we are assuming it we are assuming it we are approximating it so ma mass of proton and neutron both are m so mass of nucleons in short is m now a minus 4 is the total number of nucleons in daughter nucleus you can see a minus 4 is the total number of nucleons in daughter nucleus so daughter nucleus will have a mass m into a minus 4 m into a minus 4 
and what will be the mass of alpha particle mass of alpha particle will be equal to 4m mass of alpha particle will be equal to 4m okay so you can see this thing over here so mass of alpha particle equal to 4m okay and the mass of daughter nucleus is equal to a minus 4 into m now what is the k alpha value you can clearly see this thing you have this particular value of k alpha and you have this particular value of kd now just put all these values over there okay in equation 8 and 9 put this value md equal to a minus 4 times m okay so put in the place of md what is the value of k alpha let's write let's write the value of k alpha so k alpha equal to that is the mass of uh, kinetic energy of alpha particle kinetic energy of alpha particle so it is equal to mdq it is equal to md q is there in the multiplication divided by divided by md plus m alpha md plus m alpha okay this is the kinetic energy of alpha particle this is what this is kinetic energy of alpha particle now we have md value equal to a minus 4m and m alpha value equal to 4m so md equal to a minus 4m md equal to a minus 4 times m okay and what is md it is again equal to a minus 4 m and what is your m alpha m alpha equal to 4 m okay and this is into into q so m m and m will cancel okay so what do you get you get a minus 4 divided by a a minus 4 divided by a into q this is the value of k alpha this is the value of k alpha so a minus 4 divided by a into q okay let's let's suppose this is equation 10 let's suppose this is equation 10 and you already know that uh, kd plus k alpha kd plus k alpha it is equal to q it is equal to q so you have got the value of k alpha right you have got the value of k alpha like this so just subtract uh, k alpha will be brought to the right hand side so q minus k alpha q minus k alpha and k alpha value is this k alpha value is this so in the place of k alpha you put this value so what do you get k my q minus k alpha so q into 1 minus a minus 4 by a so that will be equal to kd equal to 4 by a q 4 by a times q so kd equal to 4 by a times q so you have got this you have got k alpha also from here that is equal to this and kd also that is kinetic energy of daughter nucleus is this kinetic energy of alpha particle is this and uh, clearly you can see this particular fact which we have derived from here that clearly kinetic energy of alpha particle will be much much greater than kinetic energy of daughter nucleus okay kinetic energy of alpha particle why will it be large why the kinetic energy of alpha particle will be large kinetic energy of alpha particle will be large because the number a minus 4 is very huge the number a minus 4 is very huge okay a minus 4 is a very huge number okay and you are uh, uh, because this is what this is a is greater than your 210 over here because alpha alpha decay is happening the meaning of this is a is greater than 210 right alpha party alpha decay alpha decay happens when atomic mass number a okay alpha decay happens when atomic mass number a is greater than 210 got it alpha decay happens when atomic mass number a is greater than 210 we have already learned in the previous lectures we have already learned in the previous lecture so when atomic mass number a this a value if it is greater than 210 it is it is greater than 210 then what happens k alpha value we already have a minus 4 divided by a into q okay and what is the value of kd kd is 4 by a into q okay so you can write this particular thing as 4 times q by a you can write it like 4 times q by a and you can write it in this manner you can write it in this manner a minus 4 into q by a okay so q by a is there and q by a is there now compare the multiplication it, it is multiplied by 4 and it is multiplied by a minus 4 so clearly clearly a minus 4 is much much bigger than 4 okay why it is much much bigger than 4 because a is much much bigger uh, sorry a is greater than 210 so that's why a minus 4 will be much much greater than 4 so that's why k alpha that's why k alpha will be much much greater than kd that is kinetic energy of alpha particle will be much much greater than kinetic energy of daughter nucleus what does it mean it means that daughter nucleus recoils 
इन अल्फा डी के इन अल्फा डी के कानेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ अल्फा पार्टिकल इज मच मच ग्रेटर देन कानेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ डॉटर न्यूक्लियस सो दिस मीन्स दैट डॉटर न्यूक्लियस रिकॉइल्स ओके सो इन वेन यू शूट अ बुलेट फ्रॉम द गन दिस इज सपोज योर गन ओके दिस इज योर गन एंड यू आर शूटिंग अ बुलेट फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर गन वॉट हैपन्स देन If you shoot a bullet from this gun, then the gun recoils. The gun recoils in the backward direction, and the bullet goes in the forward direction. Similarly, you have your parent nucleus initially. It emits an alpha particle. So the alpha particle will go in the forward direction, and the daughter nucleus will actually recoil in the backward direction. So K alpha is much greater than K d. So kinetic energy of alpha particle is much greater than kinetic energy of daughter nucleus. So this is what we have proved from here. This is what we have proved from here. Now gamma's theory of alpha decay onwards. Gamma's theory of alpha decay onwards. We will do in the next class. So from here onwards, gamma's theory of alpha decay onwards. We will do it in the next class. So thank you very much, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Please like and subscribe our channel because it takes a lot of effort to make all these videos. And you guys are not at all watching the videos. You guys are not at all watching the videos. And you guys are not at all liking the videos. You guys are not at all subscribing to the channel. Since many days, the number of subscribers is stagnant. since many days the number of subscribers is stagnant right so you must actually subscribe to the channel so that it helps our videos to get the reach okay so thank you very much